Welcome back to John's Films. Remember this? This is a laptop I benchmarked a few weeks ago. Fantastic system. Got it for a song from Dell. It's a 4K OLED panel, 9750H, and an NVIDIA 2080 graphics card. I didn't think I could get any happier. Well, Dell, about a week later, decided to come out with yet another killer deal. Same everything, 4K display, 2080 graphics card, but they put an 8-core processor in it. Now, I've tested this with DaVinci Resolve Studio, no real difference. But now I'm going to test it with the free edition, and I think we might see something change. Let's find out. And we're not going to mess with preamble today, getting to the benchmarks. On the left here, you see the Laptop Monster 9750H 6-core processor with the 2080 and Max-Q design. Here we've got the Studio Edition. This is the same laptop, same configuration, with the free edition of Resolve. Notice 598, 602. We're going to talk about that in a minute. Next, you got my buddy's machine with an 8-core 9880H CPU in it. It's got the 2080, just like the other one, and 32 gigabytes of the same speed of RAM. However, in the free edition, this one scores 635. In Studio, it scored 605. Hmm. Interesting. Let's talk about it from a performance standpoint only. The difference with Studio and Free in performance is really tied to the following tests, all H.264 and any H.265. Further, the Studio Edition should be able to decode the red footage in the graphics card. But in this case, that didn't pay off. So let's take a look. Well, the highlighted areas are H.264, and what Resolve Studio does is unlock the hardware, accelerated, decoder, and encoder that's in your graphics card. So here are the RTX 2080. We were able to use the NVENC encoder and decoder, both for timeline playback, but also more importantly in this test, for rendering. In this case, it was unlocking the footage, decoding it, and then re-encoding it for the test. Now, we averaged 35 frames a second in studio, and 26 frames a second in the free edition. Why was that? Well, as we know, the free edition had to use the CPU to get it done in software rather than doing it in a hardware accelerated decoder encoder. But check this out. That advantage, the 35 frames to 26 frames from the CPU being forced to do the work in free and the GPU doing it in studio, got lost immediately. The second we slowed down the operation with any amount of GPU accelerated events, threw the whole thing off. In fact, to the point that we no longer had a bottleneck in the rendering portion of the work, the bottleneck was in the graphics part of the work. We see the same thing here. These two are both temporal and 3x temporal noise reduction are very heavily predicated on the GPU, and the GPU was again the bottleneck. Here, with Optimized Media, which is a straight encoding play, we again saw the difference. Here's where it gets interesting. 6-core processor at 2.6 GHz default, 8-core processor at 2.3 GHz default, and check out what happens. The difference that we saw in the basic grade, with the encoding being done in the GPU versus the CPU, was entirely erased when it came to the 8-core CPU. The 8-core CPU was able to keep up and almost accomplished the exact same thing when there was zero grading on it and it was just optimizing the media. What that means is take the media straight out of the camera and transcode it into another format. Here it was transcoding to H.264. So what are we learning? Well, we're learning if your graphics card is good but not fantastic fantastic, and I know an RTX 2080 is a fantastic card, but an RTX 2080 Max-Q has less CUDA cores and is clocked down much lower than a typical RTX 2080. The result of this is lower temperatures and lower power consumption for the laptop form factor, but it's also lower performance. And we found the breaking point here. The breaking point was effectively two processor cores. Those extra two cores kicked us over the edge to where we made up for not being able to leverage the GPU for encoding and decoding with the hardware accelerated chip. Here's where it gets very interesting. The studio version of Resolve running on my buddy's laptop scored a 605. And the difference? 
it was forcing itself to use, even though the CPU was faster, it was forcing itself to use the hardware encoder because it could. In this case, though, the hardware encoder wasn't any faster because the GPU was slowing everything down. So because this is complex to abstractly think about, I've created the following charts. The title of the chart really sets the tone, however, because hardware accelerated encoding in your graphics card is only available in H.264 and H.265. You are able to leverage the GPU in Studio for decoding and deburying both B-RAW and RED, but this is gonna be the typical use case, and so it's the one I'm gonna cover right now. We have a high GPU, low-end GPU. We got a low-end CPU and a high-end CPU. When you matrix these, what you're looking at is the recommendation of what you should run for best performance. On the low-end CPU, low-end GPU side, if you're running Studio, you're able to use the hardware encoder in your discrete GPU. That hardware encoder, surprise, same one that's in the high-end GPU. So while you won't have the speediest of noise reduction or other effects, you will get the benefit of the hardware acceleration in the decoder and encoder for the H.264 and H.265. It almost makes Studio worth the upgrade. However, if you don't need noise reduction and you aren't willing to wait for it on a low-end GPU, maybe you just upgrade the CPU. Why do I say that? Well, you got a low-end CPU. You can speed it up in the free edition by moving to a high-end CPU. More cores, it'll render it out, decode it faster, encode it faster, and boom, you're moving. I'd only do that, though, if you think you're never going to Studio. Why? Because the Studio license for Resolve has always been a perpetual license goes from version to version to version. My first license was for DaVinci Resolve 12.5. We're on 16, got 17, hopefully around the corner. No big deal. So what do you do if you're on a high-end GPU and you're on a low-end CPU right here? You're using Studio. Should you upgrade to a high-end CPU? Not really. Not if you're using H.264 and H.265 exclusively. That'd be a waste of money for Resolve. Wouldn't really get anywhere. However, you may have other reasons you do it, and of course, Studio, the best case scenario, is Studio on a high-end CPU and a high-end GPU. And in that case, you get to leverage hardware encoding for H.264 and H.265, but you also get to build the effects and manage the noise reduction and all the other stuff that comes with Studio in the high-end GPU. Well, there you have it. Turns out two extra cores really does help when you're working with DaVinci Resolve Free. If this has helped you pick out a laptop or you'd like to say thanks, feel free to buy me a coffee. Link is below. Otherwise, click subscribe and like. It helps other people find the video and I truly appreciate it. Thanks for spending your time watching this and have a great day.